Finally, we're going to look at the sample and hold section. Sample and hold itself is not an unusual module. You'll find that in quite a few semi-modular synths or other noise sources may have one of these built in. But there's a few extra tricks in the Sputnik sample and hold I want to show you. Let's go ahead and undo some of our wiring right now. This is our trigger. We'll still need our trigger here for the sample and hold. I'm going to go back to using my LFO for trigger initially, though, because I want to show you a couple things. Sample and holds have two main inputs. A pulse input, how quick you want to sample a new setting, and a control voltage input, what voltage you're sampling and memorizing to send to the outputs. The trick with the Sputnik is it can alternate between two different outputs. I'm going to pull some of these controls for now. Pull that mod wheel control as well. And initially, let's actually use this for an audio application. I've got a little drum module here, a Pico drum from Ericasense. Very handy little device. We're going to send one pulse to trigger one of the drums, and we'll route that straight into our audio output. There's that kick drum. Then we're going to take the other alternating output and have it trigger a second drum in this Pico drum module. We've got the same drum sound on both. So I'm going to go ahead and change the drum sound. Yeah. So that's the idea behind these alternate outputs in the sample hold module, is rather than doing one output on every single pulse, it gives you the option to go ahead and alternate in between outputs. In addition to pulses like this being fun, it can also be interesting when you trigger two different envelope generators. Pull the drums for now. Go back to our previous connection. Pull these triggers. Borrow a copy of our keyboard's gate. Have that go into the pulse input. And this time, have it alternate between our two different ADSRs over here. I'll pull the signal coming from our current keyboard. Send one to our upper ADSR. Send another one down here to our lower ADSR. And then we're going to take the voltage output and mix them together. Make sure these are both turned up all the way. There we go. So one of these is coming from the bottom ADSR and the other is coming from the top ADSR. And these are going back into our filter cutoff again. Make sure our gate's plugged in tight. Now as I'm playing alternating notes, I'm getting alternating envelopes. One has a slow decay release. One is a very fast decay release. So we're getting a shorter percussive note and a longer sustained note. So when we set up our one note arpeggio again, getting something a bit more interesting. That's not an octave jump from the arpeggio. That's being caused by different envelopes here. Get this chord out of the way. So that little two-way switch built into the sample and hold gives you all sorts of options to get more articulation, like an upstroke and a downstroke and a pick on a string, different hands of a drum, etc. So keep that in mind as one possibility. But finally, there is indeed the old-fashioned, let's just get random voltages out of this beast. So I'm going to leave that on the pulse. I'm going to route, get a shorter cable here my louder blue noise to get a wider range of voltages as my CV input. And let's go ahead and take that output and initially run it to something really obvious. I'm going to run it through the integrator in the event that I want to smooth it out a little bit, and then run that back into my VCO modulation, which is down here again. There we go. Actually, let me repatch this so you can see the voltage coming out of this arrangement. And rather than use our keyboard, let's trigger this off of our LFO. So we have a regular stream of random notes coming out. You can see the stream of random voltages coming out on the green trace here. I'll increase the depth of modulation from the sample and hold to the VCO's frequency. There's the typical random voltages here from sample and hold, and we can smooth it out.
patch around the integrator and get very snappy changes. And again, you could use this for anything that we did before in terms of getting random filter cutoffs, pitches, modulations. Indeed, we could use something like this on, well, as long as we have this wired up, the pulse width. So let's go ahead and just change our connection here to be pulse width. Make sure we're on the square wave. There we're getting different outputs from our oscillator depending on our sample and hold. And we can trigger that on every single note if we want to, just get some variations again when we're playing the same note over and over again. Now again, that's a one note arpeggio, but instead of just getting a completely steady sound like this, by employing a little bit of randomness, in this case routed to the pulse width, we can get some variety on each note. random variation into your control voltages that are controlling parameters of your synth is how you start adding more interest and more organic human feel into your patches and more variety. So it doesn't sound just like machine music. So a random voltage source may not be the first thing you buy. You might go ahead and get LFOs, envelopes, VCOs, filters, start to fatten out your system that way. But if you're really into long system type of musics, or you want to create something that just has more subtlety to it, definitely consider adding some random modulator down the road. 